What's on the Easter menu? It ain't just Easter eggs. It's not deviled eggs. We're talking about an old tradition, but giving it a new flavor. What is it? Ham loaf. But it is a smoked ham loaf with green chilies and roasted garlic breadcrumbs, a special glaze over the top, and Easter blessing is hitting the table. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the barn. And what are we talking about? The Easter special episode. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a great one. We're talking about ham loaf. No, not your ordinary ham loaf that maybe so you just put together in the house. We're talking about a smoked ham loaf that's got so many great flavors blended into it and a glaze that goes over the top. Ooh, it is so good. But this video is sponsored by Chef Temp. Now, I got to looking around on the internet for a digital thermometer as something I might need because I use a lot of them. This thing was always popping up everywhere I looked. Now, the one we're using today is the Chef Temp Final Touch X10. And this has won the Red Dot Design Award. It's sort of like the Oscars of this deal. I mean, this thing is really great. So we're going to try it out. And right out of the box, when I picked this thing up, you know what I thought? Feels good in your hand. That's pretty much a necessity to me, whether it's a knife, a thermometer, whatever I'm using, a rope. If it feels good right off the bat, I'm already excited about this deal. But folks, remember, we're still in our 2 million subscriber giveaway. I mean, you got to have it, you are. So be sure and stick around to the end. We'll show you some great prizes that you could win. But let's get after that smoker. As far as I can remember, my mother pulled a ham loaf out of the oven every Easter Sunday. And I mean, there was people that come in after church. We may be feeding 30 people. People always seem to show up at the house to eat my mother's ham loaf. My mother, I loved her so much. She was a great cook. She was my greatest inspiration to learn to cook, but I never really was a fan of the ham loaf. I what? never I never let her know I didn't. And mama, I'm, I'm sure sorry, mama, but I like mine with a little more maybe taste and flavor to it and what the smoker's gonna bring to it. So I don't think my mother would be offended by this. I think it would be all right. Get the family together. This is a tradition that I want y'all to start is bring them all in there in the kitchen or bring them outside around that smoker and let's make some smoked ham loaf. Now to start out with, we're going to have what? One cup of cow juice. Yes, we are. After that, one cup of bread crumbs. Now, we're going to take these two little cackleberries fresh right out of the chicken. I mean, I followed that chicken around all morning because I was one egg short. There she goes. She didn't let me have it right there in the hand. I was so proud of her. I give her some extra food. I did. Two eggs. Beat them up just a tad before you go to putting them over here in this. So just give them a good mixing just to sort of get things started. I like to go ahead and stir the breadcrumbs and the milk around just a tad. Pour them cackleberries right in there and do a little mixing. The breadcrumbs that I am using today are roasted garlic. Oh. Now you could use the Italian, you could use the original kind, but I do be liking me some roasted garlic breadcrumbs. They go really well with this. We started with one cup of breadcrumbs. We may have to add just a tad more to it, but let's get that out of the way. Let it sit over here and let's work on the star of the show and that is the meat. We've got about a pound and a half of ham diced up big enough that you can just get it in the grinder. If you don't have a grinder, you can use a food processor or you can just go to your local little meat market guy and say, could you grind me up about a pound and a half of ham? So we're gonna go ahead and grind the ham, probably about six slices of bacon and then we're gonna mix that with just some regular old pork sausage. What happened? I got tangled up in my work. Now I've gotta to try to rewind it backwards to, to know which way it went. We have got the ham and the bacon ground up. Get you one of them yellow onions. I like the yellow because it's gonna add a little sweetness to this and just- How do you spell yeller? Y-E-L-L-E-R. You remember that movie on Disney, Old Yeller? Yeah. It was not Old Yellow. Hey, Old Yellow! Nobody hollered for Old Yellow. They hollered for Old Yeller. That's why it's Yeller. Get a Yeller onion. Just dice it up there pretty fine. We've got a pound of pork sausage already in this bowl. Let's just go ahead and get these onions over in there. that let's just go ahead and add this wonderful dab of meat here 
and we're gonna go to incorporating it all. Big says, maybe you could have dropped some of that. It would have would have been really nice if you'd have dropped it. Now, when you just first get it mixed up just a little, we have a surprise ingredient that my mother would have never put in there that I know it needs. Some hatch green chili. We gotta have it because, folks, how many of you have ever watched a video where we didn't pull out a green chili or a jalapeno? Ain't no sense in quitting now. Here comes the breadcrumbs. Look at them. They have done set up a little out here due to the hot weather. So we may have to add a little broth to these, Shen. Looks like peanut butter. But the cowboy loves a challenge, so we'll see what happens. You gotta get more out of that bowl. Gotta get more out of that bowl. Yeah, use your hands. Use my hands, she says. And turn the bowl where the people can see your hands you in the bowl. That's all I'm gonna get you. Now just go to working that in there. And I can done tell you, we're gonna have to have a little more grit breadcrumb to this. Cause we want it to be able to stay together in a loaf. And you can see it ain't do that. So we're gonna add probably a half a cup more just to start out with. We'll see what that brings along here in a minute. It's like making biscuits. Always start out as wet as you can and then we'll get it to where it's dry. So what are you looking for? I'm looking for a consistency that will stay in a loaf form and not fall apart. And see that half a cup really done us some good. And what would you like to season it with? You in the third row by the mesquite tree behind the house that, oh, he's gone, Shen. He done left, he's camera shy. We would season it with what? Our mesquite seasoning. You know where to get it, KenRollins.com. Give it a pretty generous little bath here because I want everybody to get in that flavor. We're gonna mix it one more time. We have preheated our grill with some good Fogo hardwood lump charcoal that is oak. We'll be mixing some fruit wood with that to give us a little better taste. So hang on folks, we are nearly there. Culinary is hard at work. Well, we have got it into a life, a life, a loaf form we do. You can see that. I like to go ahead and put it on this pan. Put a little breadcrumbs down there to sprinkle it, sort of like when you're flouring biscuits. We want to make sure that it's molded to shape. I like to go ahead and put me some bacon on it because I need that good bacon flavor to run down through there. Give them a good tucking under and we'll probably have to do this again when we get it to the grill. So just lay them on there. Then we'll try to get them tucked under that meat and get it sealed up really well. About four pieces is all you need. Well, ain't it a pretty sight? Bacon all wrapped up on some hog meat. This is what you call, let me see, one, two, three, a three hog meat combination. Yes, they are all glad to be a part of this deal. We have cleaned and oiled the hasty bake here. Down here is the hot end of the fire, about from here down. That's what we call direct heat. Down here, I don't see nobody over here. This is what we call indirect heat. That's where we're gonna start out. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it placed over there. And if I'll tell you a little tip too. When you, if you get this done in time, stick it in the ice box and let it chill just a little bit longer. It'll hold together. But this one here is staying pretty good. So we're gonna put it right there. Go ahead and shut that lid. We're gonna add some applewood chunks to it here in just a minute. Try to run that temperature pretty close to twin 220, 250 along in there. We hope maybe in an hour or so, we'll break out that chef temp, we'll probe it to 145, cause that is a magic number. You say, no, we cannot eat pork at 145. I know we can't, but we're gonna move it back over here, do some goodness to it, mm, mm, mm. Y'all stick around, you don't wanna miss all of this and the prizes. Well, we've been on an hour and 45 minutes about that. Took a little longer than I thought. Temperature run good in there, you can see I got the little probe ready to go. We're gonna go in this end here. Check down here in the middle. So we're in good shape. Well, temps are all good where we need to be. And folks, the first thing, remember I told you it felt good in your hand when you had this, but here's another plus too. You open this up, it comes on. You know how many times I run a battery down when I'm putting it back over here looking for the on off switch where it might be? It goes off. That's true. This is really handy. Now. Another thing I really liked, and you've seen me when I had it in here, I was reading the temperature here. But when I come back over here, it turns it around for you. You ain't got to try to read it upside down like some genius, folks. 
this thing is very handy no matter where you put it it's going to show that temperature it's easy to read it's got big numbers i ain't got to have my glasses on now another plus is when you're in there one second automatic read real quick the quickest time ever you may not think that makes a bunch of difference but when you're down here over the heat of this fire and them flames is licking on your knuckle hair one second is a plus i'm telling you for sure now folks i've really never had a nice temperature probe i haven't there's no telling how many i can't count them on all my fingers and toes the ones that i've picked up at little grocery stores supermarkets be on the road have to have one i didn't think it made that big a difference i might get one use out of them maybe two but i'm telling you this does make a difference when you can have something that's really this versatile but you can tell it's really made with quality it's going to last you a long time you're not going to have a battery every week because that was my biggest problem i left them on all the time had to look for a switch is this on or off or is this hold or what it is this is so easy to read so we have reached our temperature we're going to move this back down here to the hot side and ooh, it does smell some good and that bacon is looking really good while y'all wasn't here i done took me some worcestershire sauce brown sugar some of that honey dijon mustard and some apple cider vinegar mix that up and we'll probably go about 10 to 20 minutes here accordingly we'll put the chef temp final touch x10 probe in there to get to a temperature of around 160 but we need to glaze that thing i mean that's what it needs it's telling me right now give me a little bath with some of this give me a good coating i want to feel that shine lay me out in the sunshine i got a thousand dollar tan right now i do My mother would be so proud she would. Now folks, when you get that off there, one little tip I'm gonna give you right quick too is let that thing cool a little bit. Whoa, say not yet, say not yet. Let it cool before you slice it. It's gonna slice that much better. And you may have to use a serrated knife, but hey, this is just like any meatloaf too. Tomorrow's sandwiches, if you have any left, cold meatloaf, don't get no better than that. So let me get a bite out of here. And I'm gonna try that right there. Got a little extra sauce right on there. You can see them breadcrumbs and that onion. They say make green chili in there. Mm. It is so good. Made me want to do the Easter Bunny. Woo! It is probably 93 degrees here today. And all my pups, see, look at Duker there. It's really hot. I have y'all a treat. Now, you know you can't be having this because it has onion in it. So we've got a little treat for everybody due to the request of one of the viewers asking what we could put on our little cooking set. We have treats for our good taste testers. Say hello. And there is, Duker says, that ain't not meat. <laughs> <laughs> That's imitation. Folks, I'm just going to tell you, I really do like this thing. It, it is a great probe. Uh, I like the fact that you can read it from this side or this side. Don't make no difference. It's easy to read, shows up well. Even backlit, if you've got your cooking at night, you can still see this very well. Uh, I like it so well, and they like it so well, that what? We're going to give some of these away. We are as a prize. To enter in this contest, I need to know what would you use your Chef Temp Final Touch on? That's the first thing that you would be able to smoke. Be sure and comment down there below and tell me what it would be because I'm gonna read them all and we're gonna pick out some winners. And folks, they're giving you the opportunity to not only help us promote this and you can win one of these, but there is a code down there below too to where you can get $10 off. Grilling season's coming up. Father's Day's right around the corner. Mother's Day, they got a lot of mothers that be grilling too. So make sure that you check this out, enter that code, 
And if you don't win one, get you $10 off and have you several of them. But I got a little story I need to tell you right quick about an Easter egg hunt that we had so many years ago when my kids were little. And we had some company that come by and these kids do not know anything about hunting Easter eggs in a cow pasture. Some eggs were green, some eggs were white, some eggs were brown. We laughed at them little kids that was trying to pick up them fresh green piles that looked like maybe like eggs, but they wasn't. And you'd see one of them pick it up, it'd be dripping off their finger. And they said, these eggs aren't cooked enough. Well, folks, I'm thinking that really wasn't an egg. But folks, this is not a season about hunting Easter eggs. This is not. This is a season about being thankful and remembering what really happened so many years ago. They rolled away the stone. There was nobody in there. As you sit around your table that is full today, I want you to remember the tomb was empty. So you have something's empty and you got hope and you got faith and you got a full table around you. Hey, it's a great Easter blessing it is. But as always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag flying safe no matter where we be. We really do appreciate it. For the rest of you, get on in here. It's time for that big old hug it is. God bless you each and every one. I hope you have a happy Easter and I'll see you down the smoked ham loaf trail.